Rocco Prestio. I play with a group called Tower of Power. In this video, we're going to answer some questions that are frequently asked me about my technique and my approach to the instrument. First, I want to tell you just a little about me. I've been playing with the band for a little over 20 years. Some of my influences uh, go back to uh, the 60s, early 70s like uh, James Brown, Sly Stone, uh, the Memphis Sound, the Motown Sound, players like James Jamerson, Duck Dunn. Um, I consider myself basically a rhythm section player, not a soloist, although I feel like I'm soloing all the time the way I play, but it's always from inside the groove. Uh, Anybody who may have heard any, uh, any records or seen me play live will notice that uh, I'm a pretty busy player. And I just want to make the point that it's okay to be busy, just as long as you don't step on nobody's toes. And with that, let's tune up and get started. Okay, here's a G. Here's a D. Here's an A. And here's an E. The first thing we're going to look at on this video is the right and left hand technique. We're going to start with the right hand first. Uh, I use two fingers, and I use just this part of the fingers. And I personally use uh, hand cream just for sensitivity to the string because I've had problems where my fingers would stick <laughs> uh, to the strings. Uh, I position my hand in the middle of this area. Not back here because there's too much tension, not up here because it's too, too much flack. I rest my thumb on the pickup or on the E string for uh, support. And you'll notice I play fairly hard. Um, you'll notice I don't pluck underneath the string and pull it, but I just pluck it firm, alternating 
constantly, uh, almost all the time. If you damp it out the strings with your left hand like this, you create this percussive sound, or what is called ghosting, where the notes are completely dead. As far as my left hand is concerned, probably the most important thing I do is get this muting sound uh, where the notes are, are short and percussive, but you can still hear the tone of the note. And the way I get this is I'll put my second finger down on the note that I want to hear and putting the rest of my fingers down, the third and fourth. This is the sound that you get. Now if I lift the third and fourth, it down gradually you can hear the difference um, and that's how I basically get that sound one more thing that makes that sound happen is just from and that's just with the one finger just lifting up enough and then just hitting it dead um, that would be the ghost note which is different than muting because there's not really any note there but those are the two things that make this happen okay so at this point we're going to combine uh, both hands and try this exercise that takes you from the top to the bottom and uh, with the right hand alternating both fingers evenly consistently across the strings and the left hand is going to do the muting but it's important to let the tone of the note still ring through so it will be like this and like I said alternating and making it even and consistent that's the important thing Let's try this with 16th notes in the metronome. Just be sure to control the muting with your left hand so the notes don't ring into each other. Let's try it at a faster tempo. A good example of what we've been talking about with the 16th note feel is the tune What Is Hip. It's become kind of a signature tune with the band. Uh, its original concept was derived from the drummer at the time, David Garibaldi. He had this idea for droning on one note. Uh, and at the time, I remember thinking, ah, this is not going to work. Um, but as it turned out, it turned out to be very hip, <laughs> and uh, I enjoy playing it. You'll notice when I'm playing this line that I'll be playing more than just the root. I'll be playing octaves and adding the minor seventh and other intervals, but we'll get into that later. <laughs> 